Good evening to all. Uh, so uh, this being a privilege to me uh, to be part of this uh, excellent conference, the Act 2021. So I feel like so honored to be back to some of the, uh, the academic uh, capital, uh, what I call the cultural capital of Kerala, uh, Trishul. So I'm being the alumni of uh, Trishul Government Medical College. Uh, there have been like the mentors, the teachers, all, all have been from the Trishul. So uh, this being a great honor for me. So, so the topic uh, for me is there's a way to do it better, find it. Dodging GA with novel techniques in regional anesthesia. Stop the uh, recording because I'm not able to go for the next slide. Doctor, can you try uh, clicking once again? Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, we'll do one thing. Uh, maybe do you want me to uh, share the uh, screen? Maybe if you can share me your presentation, I can control from here so that. Uh, I'm already doing that, right? No, I can see the, uh, the first slide only. Yeah, that's the issue. I can't move to the next slide. I don't know what's there. One moment. Uh, can you try now? Yeah, it's going now. Yeah, uh, now share the screen and uh, So, so yeah, the issue is that uh, if you try to uh, control the slide, so okay. I may not be able to go with my flow, right? No, yeah, uh, one minute. Let me just try making your co-host and uh, try once again, because that's possible now. Can you try once again? No, no, I'm not able to do the, it's not moving. Okay. Uh, any error showing or just let the slide is just stuck there? The slide is stuck over there. Okay, we'll do one thing. Uh, you can share me your presentation now. I can control from here. You can tell me like maybe next slide so that, you know, that can uh, be done. That can be done. Okay. Yeah, will it be okay? Yeah, I'm okay, but the thing is that uh, for the audience, will it be okay? I'm not sure. Like, okay. I need to tell like next slide, next slide. Should be, but I'm not sure why I'm not able to do that. Okay, do one thing. No, um, I will. Uh, one minute. Yeah. Good evening to all. Uh, so, so it's being a great honor for me. And to be part of this uh, great academic extravaganza, the Act 2021, uh, which is being organized by ISA Trishur. So it's again a proud moment for me to be back to be the part of uh, Trishur ISA. As a faculty, I being the, uh, the alumni of Government Medical College. So many of the viewers, the committee members have been my teachers, my mentors, my colleagues, my friends. So, so warm greetings from uh, Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Uh, and the topic given to me uh, by the, uh, the, the Auspicious Scientific Committee of Act 2021, uh, there's a way to do it better, find it, dodging GA with novel techniques in regional anesthesia. So when I got the topic, uh, this was my 
expression. This uh, the mind went like was blind, like the Edison holding the bulb. So I just read through the lines. What is it exactly? And it took a while to get to the topic proper. So finally, when the light bulb, I thought that I will overview the topic as. So really, uh, general anesthesia is to be avoided. Regional anesthesia, is it really a boon? And I will go through the regional anesthesia pyramid, what I thought would be helpful for the viewers and for the clinical uh, colleagues. And can we trust RA alone? And few add-ons and innovations in the regional anesthesia. And of course, the trending regional blocks of the decade and a few take home stage. So if you look into the anesthesia history, so it was being uh, a barbaric act, uh, the surgery when there was no anesthesia, and then came the, the historic event uh, of the either demonstration at Boston, where Morton demonstrated the effect of ether. And from there, anesthesia has grown to the level, what you see on the slide, the MexLeap, the robotic anesthesia system, and to the, uh, the Kepler intubation system with, of course, the uh, robotic intubation system. So, some anesthesia, is it really a win? So, what do you guys think? So, what the common stigma of general anesthesia, what we all feel, uh, just a few points I would point out like the increased incidence of PONV, post op cognitive dysfunction, increased incidence of DVT, increased hospital stay. We hear in and out about the problems of general anesthesia. So when regional anesthesia came out, came to the scene, like uh, elixir or what you can see the problem that we have in, in the regional anesthesia. So it is, is it really uh, worth of uh, regional anesthesia completely replacing general anesthesia? We will come to that point, we'll discuss on it. So the spectrum of regional anesthesia, what we all know is from the basic the local infiltration anesthesia to the, uh, the peripheral nerve blocks and the central neuroaxial blocks. And if you take the pyramid from the lowest strata, the hierarchy system, if you can tell the basic local infiltration anesthesia and to the interfacial compartment blocks. Next, of course, the peripheral nerve blocks can be a single shot or continuous and the ever, ever uh, reliable central neuroaxial blocks. So, coming to some of the uh, evidences of uh, the regional anesthesia, if you want to call it a boon or completely uh, avoid the complications of general anesthesia, we have a huge meta analysis which was done in 2006 when it was published in BJ. We had like multi, multiple studies at the RT to the effect of uh, regional anesthesia and grade the outcome of anesthesia. So the important points which uh, the study showed, uh, the, there was uh, a study which showed uh, the opioid com consumption. If uh, we are giving a female catheter for a total knee replacement uh, compared to only opioids. So there was a significant difference in the opioid analgesia consumption if we were giving a female lung catheter as an option for post-operative anesthesia. Same as on the other slide, there was a comparison between general anesthesia and spinal anesthesia, and the mortality rate, of course, which was compared between general anesthesia and spinal anesthesia was grossly less on the spinal anesthesia side rather than the general anesthesia side. Another one article came on the BMA journal there was a comparison of general anesthesia and regional anesthesia in terms of mortality in elderly patients with hip fracture. And again, showed uh, regional anesthesia was far better compared to the general anesthesia. So there are like a empty number of uh, studies uh, which shows that regional anesthesia is always uh, better or you have a favorable outcome compared to general anesthesia. So regional anesthesia gives you an edge for the outcome regarding in terms of low incidence of POMV, which is far higher if you use uh, general anesthetics, and low incidence of uh, postoperative cognitive dysfunction. This comes important if you are dealing with the elderly population. And the 
of course, a low incidence of DVE. So this slide shows the first demonstration of the lock lens sitting by uh, the ophthalmologist Carl Koller at Vienna. It was way back in 1884 where he performed the eye surgery using a cocaine. And from there, regional anesthesia has grown far, has expanded to different railings. And you can see the level of regional anesthesia where you can see the Megalin block system, which is the robotic block system. So in terms of the uh, novel RA techniques, uh, what I'm going to discuss today, we have three I have divided into three different sets of uh, novel techniques. We have innovations in terms of technique of uh, conduct of regional anesthesia. We have innovation in, in drugs, and we have also some innovations in gadgets. So we will discuss one by one. To go into the uh, innovations in techniques. So regional anesthesia, if you compare uh, different sets of blocks uh, from the upper limb, lower limb, and the trunk. So the upper limb blocks, you know, like I'm not going into all the basic blocks. I'm just uh, highlighting the salient uh, block which has uh, come up in the like, last few years and which has given a critical significance and has changed the practice of regional anesthesia. Uh, like the first one, I would go into the costoclavicular block. The second one is the targeted trunkal blocks of a modified supraclavicular reflexes block. And coming into the lower limb blocks, we have the pen block, the IPAC 41 block, and the triangle blocks, the RSPINA, the retrolamina, the MTP blocks, the rib blocks, the wrist blocks. So I'll go into the details of each one. This may be a new terms for you all guys, but many of you are already practicing the same blocks I'm going to make. And coming on to the costoclavicular brachial plexus block. Years we have been doing the upper limb surgeries for the supraclavicular brachial plexus blocks, which ultimately called the, the spinal anesthesia of the upper limb. So I'm not going to chase behind the uh, brachial plexus block. I'm not telling that uh, the innovative blocks are going to replace any of the blocks. I'm just going to give you some highlights, some points of the newer blocks. So what exactly is a costoclavicular brachial plexus block? It's nothing big different from the uh, brachial plexus block. It's just different in the way you do the block, where you keep the ultrasound probe, and where you get the effect. Okay. So anatomically, the codes are arranged more superficial and clustered if you are going laterally to the reactory. So here, basically, I'll go into the right side here. You can see. It's, as the name mentioned, it's a costoclavicular block. So the probe placement is just on the costoclavicular area. You can see it's placed parallel to the, uh, the clavicle, just on the, uh, the ridge of the coracoid. And if you place the probe in that fashion, as you can see uh, the sonar anatomy, uh, you will see the most course with the medial uh, lateral and the, the posterior part. They form a cluster. You can see a cluster lateral to the axillary artery. So the proponents of the costoclavicular block tell that because they lie in a cluster here in just adjacent to the artery, with a single injection with a very low volume, you will have a dense block. So you can see again how we approach the needle it comes from the lateral. There are methods uh, which approaches from the medial side. You can see if you place the uh, probe from below the clavicle uh, longitudinally, you will see the muscles, the clavius and the pectoral muscles, the axillary artery. And over the lateral to the axillary artery, you see the, the clusters of all the three cords lying. So with one single injection, you will get the dense block, and that's it. So what are the advantages of this costoclavicular blocks? You have less incidence of hemidiaphragmatic palsy, this being far away from the perineal nerve, uh, compared to the supraclavicular and the other proximal blocks, which have the incidence of hemidiaphragmatic palsy. 
clouds of work was having very low incidence of uh, asymptomatic palsy. And the early onset of the block as effective in optimal humerus surgery were the uh, uh, supraclavicular at times we need to give like very high volume to get that effect or else we need to give the interstitial block. So costoclavicular had this advantages of uh, helping us in the proximal humerus surgery as well as the distal surgery. And the biggest advantage for the costoclavicular was helping us to put a continuous catheter, which was always difficult in a supraclavicular as well as in this today. So this study from the Brazilian Journal of Anesthesiology shows uh, the uh, the effectiveness of uh, the guided uh, costoclavicular block. Uh, surgery. This was done uh, in the hospital by our own uh, Dr. Sandeep Devan and colleagues. So the uh, the outcome was uh, very significant and was promising. So next is another modification of the upper limb block, which is the target retractor blocks. Uh, the study was again done in India, the Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Pondicherry, Dr. Shiva was the proponent of this modification. Uh, I will just come to uh, make it simple. Like this is basically the supraclavicular ultrasound guided uh, brachiopexis block. But here uh, we are just targeting each of the trunk of the upper middle and lower trunks uh, using the ultrasound uh, and just giving inputs of uh, local anesthetics uh, that makes and the block effective and we are not going to give like too much volume. So the study concluded that the effective volume uh, required for each trunk was uh, very minimal of seven ml uh, was uh, was compared to the, to the previous studies, which was way higher. So the block not only decreases the volume, uh, which in turn is uh, better in the outcome, so that we are not giving too much of the volume for like a prior patient uh, with multiple comorbidities where we want to reduce the volume of the local anesthetic. This block is really promising. And from the upper limb, I'm going to the, uh, the lower limb. Uh, there had been like uh, multiple uh, blocks which has come to the scene in the last few uh, decades of which Pang block has been like uh, really promising in like last few years. So the name is from the pericapsula nerve group block word Pang and the other, other interesting fact that the proponent's name is like Philip Pang uh, from the Toronto Western Canada. So he is the proponent of this block where the regional anesthesia technique primarily focuses in the Astroplasties as well as for the fracture uh, case, uh, where it be the uh, trochanter as well as the neck of femur. So the coverage is basically to the, uh, the articular branches of the hip. So providing an excellent analogies here for a, uh, the whole of hip. Uh, and additionally, the important thing is that the motor function is always there. So the problem with the femoral nerve block where we had uh, high incidence of quadriceps weakness is not seen with the thing block. So this is the uh, relevant anatomy and the prop placement in the, in the thing block. Uh, you can see that it's almost uh, similar to the way we do a thing block. The only thing that it's a bit proximal and it's oblique. So the target is always, uh, uh, we always target to see the uh, anti superior spine and the glucose. As well as it always try to see the femoral artery. So keeping it can be a high frequency linear probe, or most of the times we will require a, a low frequency probe because of the, uh, the thick muscles around the uh, the uh, iliofibular and the ASIS. So here, what we finally target is the needle placement is on the iliofibular eminence, and we target to give like. Uh, of uh, the articular branches of the femoral nerves, the anterior obturator as well as the obturator. So these three nerves basically innervate the hip joint. So in case of a fracture neck of femur, a trochanter fracture, or even if there is a fracture acetabulum, a single shot, bang block, and just make huge difference for the patient. So 
this being like at least in uh, as an on arrival block in like many emergency departments and many trauma centers with uh, very promising results. So next one is the the IPAC. So what is IPAC? So this is basically uh, an infiltration between the popliteal artery and the capsule of the knee joint. So what does it mean? Like so. For knee joint, for joint replacements, basically, uh, the most common block uh, we do is an adductor canal block. So, so I'm not telling that IPAC can be a standalone block. It's always complemented with an adductor canal block. So, but with adductor canal block, what we were missing was the uh, posterior compartment of the knee joint, which is basically innovated by the sacral plexus. So with a good adductor canal block, if the surgeon is breaching the posterior capsule, a patient is was getting uh, pain uh, later. So with the advent of the IPAC block, uh, which was propounded by Sina et al. Uh, at the ESRA Congress, so when the IPAC came in, so the, the novel technique was uh, accepted because uh, every studies were showing that if there was a breach in the posterior capsule, uh, we were missing out the, uh, the pain uh, regimen because uh, the sacral plexus was not covered with the electric. So with the uh, IPAC, so the target was to be between, as the name suggests, it was infiltration between the popliteal artery as well as the uh, capsule of the knee joint. So once you target the uh, LA, the popliteal artery and the capsule of the knee joint. Finally, the drug was spreading towards the sacral uh, the sciatic plexus, uh, the, the sciatic plexus, uh, getting the analgesia to the posterior compartment of the knee joint. So this is a comparison of an canal and the IPAC block uh, with an canal block alone. So the, obviously, it showed that uh, the analgesia was better with the combination of the IPAC with the so, as I told earlier, it always covers the complete analgesia for the knee after orthoplasty when it combined with the electric nerve. It acts via the spread to the sciatic plexus, which in a way is the posterior compartment of the knee joint. So, as I discussed earlier, it's not a standalone block. So, next in the scene is the four in one block. Uh, it's again, it's covering the uh, total knee replacement analgesia regimen. So, this is a very recent block that uh, was published in 2020. Again, and this is another Indian uh, regional anesthesiologist from uh, CARE Bhuvanesha. There's a good friend of mine, Dr. Ritesh Roy and colleagues, who propounded uh, the four in, block, four in one block. So, what does uh, this four in one block give you an added advantage? So, as I discussed, like the common block is the adductor canal block. So, what adductor canal block was missing was uh, covering all the nerves which are articulating the knee joint. So what are the four nerves uh, articulating the knee joint? So they are the bottom ones are the nerve to vastus medialis, the uh, cutaneous femoral nerves, uh, the articular branch from the obturator nerve, and the part of the uh, nerve. Okay, so when we are giving the four one block, what happens? So it's, and the scanning is similar to the adductor canal block, so you place the uh, probe at the uh, mid thigh. Uh, from there, you go proximal until you see the sartorius and the vastus medialis junction, and you also scan for the uh, femoral vessels. So from there, the point of injection is the junction between the, uh, the vastus medialis and the sartorius. So once you inject, uh, it's along the uh, the uh, the canal. Also has a posterior spread where it has an added advantage of blocking the sciatic plexus. So four in one block actually blocks four nerves, basically the the uh, the saphenous, the obturator, saphenous obviously the two different nerve from the femoral, the obturator, the sciatic, and the obturator medialis, which basically in the way it's the knee joint. So advantages observed for this particular block for adductor canal. Usually we need to keep the, uh, the leg in the frog-like position, which may be a bit difficult. 
but in this case it's easy to perform even without the frog leg it's just in the supine position you can give a single injection which covers the whole four nerves of the uh, knee joint so as low as around 20 to 30 ml would be enough for this to cover the whole nerve and it has given like a long-term analysis here in Scotland. So coming on to the uh, the next area, which are the trunkal blocks. I suppose my previous speaker would have uh, gone through the important trunkal blocks. I will just give some silent, uh, salient uh, blocks, which has been like come into the last few years, uh, which were the erectus spine. I would call, as you know, like if I tell erectus spinae, uh, everybody would be like giving this block. And and I would tell this would be the uh, block of the decade because it started with the uh, block for a chronic pain management for a carcinoma ring, which was metastasized, which was uh, done obviously by Ferrero et al. From there, it like grown from analgesia for the whole trunk the rib fractures, the spine, and from the like, it has grown to block the uh, analgesia for the shoulder surgeries, uh, the laparoscopic surgeries, the bariatric, the hip surgeries. I don't know, like, where all we can give the erectus spine. It has, it has grown to that level that it has been the block of choice for almost many surgeries. So you can see that uh, the, uh, the evidence from all these studies that the erectus spine has been used like almost all parts except I would tell the head and maybe the distal leg. So as you all know, like how to perform the erectus spine, it's just on the uh, transverse process, uh, just need to have a good spread around the uh, erectus spine muscle. I'm not going to the detail because I, I'm sure that the previous speaker would have told you about this. So as I say, the modification from the erectus spinae, what is this MTP block? So the uh, the problem, like the the, uh, the disadvantage, the erectus spinae was giving you like it was not giving you a surgical pain. That was this, most of the studies show that the gives excellent analgesia, but there was no surgical pain. So this study in uh, 2019, which was published uh, in anesthesia, anesthesiology, it showed that a modification from the technique of the erectus spinae. Uh, which they named as the midpoint transfer process of pivotal block, which gave an excellent surgical anesthesia plane for the mastectomy. So basically, it's like the scanning procedure and the technique is like erectus spinae. The point of injection, if you know, is between the midpoint of the transfer process and the pleura. So you expect the uh, LA to spread just above the pleura and below the intercostal muscle. So the uh, the propounders found in the cadaveric study, uh, while giving the MTP block, the drug was uh, spreading directly into the uh, the parietal foramen of the space. So it has been now promising to be the uh, the endpoint for a parietal block, which may replace a parietal block because. You know, like parietal block, it's uh, it's sometimes difficult to attempt because of the body contour. In the case of an obese patient, uh, a scoliotic patient, you may find it difficult to find the posterior transverse ligament where we need to pierce that. And you know, like pleura is very nearby, and there's a high incidence of uh, what you call uh, pneumothorax in, in the hands of an obese. So, if the midpoint transverse uh, process to pleura blocks gives you a comparative result with the parietal block. Why not you go for a uh, easier block, which has uh, a compatible efficacy with the parietal and the erectus spine. So the advantage that the MTB block was giving was a surgical plane of anesthesia, uh, which needs to be validated uh, though with the RCTs and the compatibility with the parietal. It also can be used with a difficult body contour and there's less risk for and coming to a very latest uh, blocks for the chest, so they are called the rib blocks and the wrist blocks. What are essentially the rhomboid and the subserratus block combined with the rhomboid 
cost efficiency response. So you can see the uh, the uh, dividend in the zero communication, which was in the American Journal of Emergency Medicine, which was published in 2019, uh, where it showed the uh, the automated brain block for the multiple rib fractures, which gave like comparative uh, efficacy and the dense analgesia for a rib fracture. So how to conduct the uh, rib and the wrist block? So you can see from the image, it's a bit similar to erectus spinae and the thyroid. The only thing is that your probe placement is slightly oblique to the uh, border of the scapula. And when you keep the probe uh, at the medial part of the scapula, you need to come slightly medial where you can see the ribs and you can see the muscles, uh, the trapezius and the rhomboids where you update the level of the T6. So the point of injection, if you have this image, is between the, uh, the rhomboidus muscle and the intercostal. That's why it's called the rhomboidus uh, intercostal block. So if you go quarterly from this point to reach the T9 uh, uh, rim, uh, you can see uh, the elastomer tarsi muscle and the serratus anterior muscle with ribs and the intercostal. So here the point of injection is between the serratus anterior and the intercostal. So it's called the subserratus block. Uh, if you perform these two, we have an intense analgesia ranging from T4 to T10, which is quite a good level, uh, which is comparative to a multi-level erectus spinae or a multi-level thyroid tumor. So, so we have discussed all the, uh, the innovations and the innovative blocks, but if I call uh, the neuraxial, they are still the erecting superstars. You can see our, our own superstars. They are still the superstars uh, from the 1990s to the recent 2021. So the neuraxial blocks, the central neuraxial, cannot be replaced, or uh, I, there is no uh, what you call the replacement to those blocks in most of the situations. But the innovative blocks uh, will help you guide you to an alternative technique in case we have a contraindication or in case we have a difficulty in a neuraxial block. So all the other blocks have grown with the neuraxial blocks and they are not going to replace the neuraxial blocks. So coming on to the innovations in the drugs, uh, I'm just going to a certain point uh, where there was a hype um, with some of the drugs in the original anesthesia which is obviously the liposomal bifurcane when it came to the scene it was a bit high. It's going to replace all the, the, the uh, local anesthetics available. And of course, the, uh, the elixir, the, the lifesaver, the intralight. So liposomal bifurcane, and there was a huge meta-analysis uh, telling that this is, uh, this is going to replace the bifurcane and it's going to replace more than three days. And it's, it's one of the best choice uh, local anesthetic compared to other uh, local anesthetic available. So it was uh, it, it was really a hype. So nowadays, uh, a study has come up, the single trial, which was a large multicentric pattern analytic study, which was made in the US, which showed that uh, it was not comparable or it was not effective for a long-term analysis yeah, compared to available local anesthetic. And the Cochrane definitely concluded that uh, there is no role for liposomal mutilation for the treatment of pain after surgery. So there's no point uh, in looking into the efficacies of uh, expiral or bupirigine. I don't think like it's still available in India. It was available in the US market. And now it's, it's not popular nowadays because of this single trial. So what I would uh, tell the liquid emergency is that elixir. it's really the elixir. So if any of our colleagues who are not having the intralipid in hand and you're practicing uh, regional anesthesia, I would suggest to keep at least a while. I, I would tell like uh, at least two, three vials in your freezer for the standby for the, uh, the rescue kit. At times we can go wrong with the original anesthesia, though this will be a, a lifesaver for sure. So this 
a guy who invented or you know, propounded the use of you know, intralytic for treatment of local anesthesia systemic toxicity is a guy in Wayne Buffett. He was awarded with the 2020 Gaston Labatt Award for the obvious reason. So, and next uh, into the topic is the innovations in the gadgets. Uh, I would tell in the midst of uh, the advances in USG, I would tell the advances in the USG has changed the regional anesthesia practice all over the world. Uh, and the echogenic block needles again has changed the practice of regional anesthesia. Many of the, uh, the proponents has preached the importance of the echogenic needle the, because the uh, easy visibility makes your block easy. And of course, the catheters, which help you in the long-term analgesia, the continuous analgesia. And uh, there are like gadgets coming up for the injection pressure monitor, which helps you uh, prevent the, uh, the pressure injury to the nose when we are practicing or giving a block. So the ultrasound, if you tell right now, if it would have been in that time of uh, 1880s when uh, Morton demonstrated the either if in the present scenario, if we have a demonstration of anesthesia, we would have demonstrated with the ultrasound and everybody will tell that uh, this is not humbug. The ultrasound is not humbug and has changed completely the practice of regional anesthesia, making it safer, making it simpler, making it uh, target controlled drug delivery and making it precise. So, um, I would tell like uh, all the residents should practice using the ultrasound. Uh, also, you should learn the basics of the landmark technique. So, but still, ultrasound has to be uh, used for this you know, clear, precise contact of visualization. So, the other advantage is the uh, the 3D and the 4D ultrasound, which makes you far more precise uh, regarding the regional anesthesia delivery, uh, but obviously it's not available all over the world, but uh, I don't think like uh, it's not a replacement or it's, it's really needed for a 3D or 4D to conduct a precise anesthesia. 2D ultrasound, which are available right now in the market, like far, far better, which gives you the clear, clear image for the conduct of anesthesia. So this is the echogenic needle, which makes your the vision far better than the, the other needles. So the bottom line, the technique of anesthesia is to be tailored according to the situation of the patient. RA always complements the GA, it's not going to replace GA anymore. Don't change the innovation. So learn the basics uh, and you should not be handicapped. If, if you don't have the ultrasound, you're not going to perform a block, but ultrasound and the gadgets and the innovation will always help you uh, to give you a better outcome, but don't chase for the innovations. And the outcome of regional anesthesia is always influenced by the core competition of the performer. And never, ever uh, complain uh, the block and don't tell that it's not acting, it's not a worth a block. Always make sure that you're competent and you are giving a right block, then start commenting on the block. So regional blocks may not work everywhere, but it can work in many places and it can be a standard on block for many surgeries. So I will conclude with this point by Albert Einstein. So any intelligent tool can make things bigger and more complex. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. And I would suggest you to be in this path who makes a touch of genius and take a lot of courage to move in a safer, similar procedure and similar conduct of anesthesia. So with that, I conclude my talk and I welcome all to this again the cultural extravaganza going on in uh, UAE you all know Expo 2020. And hopefully we can all meet in uh, uh, in another conference in the coming years. I hope in this COVID pandemic and then we all have a proper academic feast from now on. Thank you. Thank you for my, thank you for hearing.